Hey everyone, welcome to our second installment of Next Best Read, our monthly series that we're going to be treating on the third Friday of every month with our librarians recommending books that we're reading and books we're looking forward to reading and books that we loved to you guys. I'm Jenna Lise, I'm a senior librarian at Oceanside Public Library and I am the Mission Branch Librarian. And Hillary, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Hillary Holly, and I'm a librarian here at Oceanside Public Library. Monica? Hi, I'm Monica Chapa Dumark. I am a librarian here at Oceanside Public Library, Principal Librarian of Adult Services. And Chelsea. Hi, I'm Chelsea Janak Igley. I'm the Literacy Coordinator with the library. I work with adults and families with literacy. Awesome. Um, so we're going to first talk about books that we recommend or books that we just finished reading. Um, I took notes because I don't know, I'm really into like what I'm reading at the time that I'm reading it and I forget immediately what I just read. <laughs> so um, the book that I just finished is Zadie Smith's Intimations. It's six essays. It's really short. Like I listened to it. She narrates it. Um, six essays. It, I think it's two hours of listening. It's less than 100 pages. But it's essays that she wrote during the pandemic um, when she was a resident of New York. Um, it was published in July. So that was what, March, April, May, June, July, three, three months into the pandemic that it was published. But since we're like seven months in, um, a lot of what she's saying is still relevant. And their essay is about like just how the world is right now and how, I don't know, they're kind of like centering. Like they make you, made me feel a little bit less lost in the world. And um, she talks about, I don't know, she leaves New York in one of the essays. She's moving out of New York and she's talking about like income disparity, but she's talking about her neighbors and people that she sees on the street and people that like she puts like kind of like names or life into, into a lot that we see in the pandemic. And it's, it was grounding and I do recommend it. It's super quick. So if you need like maybe just to listen to like a really long podcast or <laughs> just need to get away for a second, since they're essays, you could also read and then stop. And I don't know, I recommend it as like a, grounding activity. I wish that I had her essays with me today. <laughs> I did Libby, so I have to, I'm on the hold list again to re-listen. <laughs> Are um, they themed and they like kind of flow one into the other? Um, they do. Okay. They do. They're not like chronological or anything um, and they don't necessarily relate to each other, but it's just like you're talking to her. So it's just like having a conversation. <laughs> How is the narrator? Was It's not her, is it? It is her. She's the narrator. Cool. Yeah, so that's nice, too. I like that's it when nice. own book. Yeah, me too. It is a lot more, um, I don't know, she's interesting also, so hearing her voice is, I don't know, makes mm -hmm. it feel more like she's speaking to me and like her essays are more personal. Mm -hmm. Hillary, what did you just finish reading? So the last book I read was Run by Ann Patchett, and I read it for our Tuesday evening book buzz group, which meets on the last Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. on Zoom. So that's my little plug for <laughs> um, We're reading The Vanishing Half this month, so if anyone's interested in joining, uh, you can sign up online and join the discussion. Uh, but I really enjoyed Run. It was the first time I've read Ann Patchett, which is pretty shocking, I think, to be a librarian that hasn't read her, <laughs> but now I have, and I can definitely see what all the fuss is about. She's a great writer. The characters were really well-developed and um, really authentic. They were easy to picture in real life, like very like three-dimensional, if that makes sense. Um, the book's about a Boston politician whose adopted son is hit by a car, and that sets off a series of events that change the course of all their lives really quickly. Um, the entire book takes place within 24 hours. So even though it's really a dramatic storyline, everything's really slowed down and um, really detailed. So um, I don't know, it, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, we had a really great discussion about it at our book club. We talked about um, expectations and families and um, timing, like how the timing of something can really change your whole life's trajectory. So um, yeah, there's lots to unpack. And I definitely recommend this one. Uh, I think it'll give you a lot to think about. She writes a lot about families, right? And like family ties and like how, I don't know, you're linked together, right? Yeah, I mean, this is the first time I've read her, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other books that I've read are about family and like, 
I, don't I think know. that, I mean, the Dutch house has been so popular, her newest one. And I think it's, similarly, it is about family. And, yeah. Dutch house is a great novel. It was really, and it was about family. Yeah. Brother and sister over five generations. And it was really great. And she's a prolific writer. She writes um, really interesting novels. She's oh. a queen for book clubs. I feel like all her books have a lot of great stuff to discuss. I love that she um, is an independent bookstore owner, too. Oh, I didn't know that. That's fun. There's a bookstore in Nashville, Tennessee that I really <laughs> want to go to um, <laughs> when I'm able to travel again. <laughs> um, what did you just finish reading, Monica? So I read Mexican Gothic by Sylvia I want to read that. Garcia. Um, I, it has a beautiful cover. Have you seen it? I wish I could... Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really gorgeous cover. Um, NPR says Jane Eyre meets Dracula is what this book is. <laughs> um, and I love both those books. So um, it's set in Mexico in the 1950s. And um, the plucky heroine, Noemi Taboada, is um, a socialite who is tasked by her father to go check on her cousin, Catalina, after the family received a disturbing letter from Catalina um, indicating that she was in distress and might be being mistreated. Mm -hmm. So um, no Noemi travels to this place in, remote, in a remote place, part of Mexico called oh. High Place. And, um, to check on Catalina and there's a, a family living in the um in this sort of mansion that is um it, you soon discover is kind of haunted so um it's really interesting and I think she does some really interesting things with the gothic novel um so there's like five kind of traits with gothic novels and one of them is the, they take place in a gloomy, decaying setting, which High Place is very much so, and um, that they feature natural, supernatural beings or ghosts. Mm -hmm. So check that off too. <laughs> Curses or prophecies, and I would say creepy legacies. Um, I would check that off. And damsel in distress and hero, heroes. Um, but I think you can be kind of the damn, she's sort of the damsel in distress and the heroine, which is kind of neat. Um, and then there's some romance in there too. So I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed the fact that um, the author kind of inserts some commentary about feminism and colonialism and manages to do that in this really interesting novel. And I, I listened to it on, um, it was a spoken word, word version of it. Uh, so it was really neat being told the story, and it, it, it has a really good narrator, too. I don't know her name, but um, they did a good job with that. So I've I, heard a lot of good things about it. I want to read it. I'm on the hold list. Who <laughs> sold me on it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, I don't know about gothic novels and how much I like them, but I want to, I want to read it or listen to it. Yeah. I don't, I don't have a, a whole lot of experience in the genre, but I know I like Jane Eyre and, you know, mm -hmm. kind of brings that and then Dracula. That it, mm -hmm. There is a, just little a little more modern, in it, but um, I don't want to give too much away about <laughs> what, what that is, but um, really, I, it was a good departure for me and good escape reading. And good spooky Halloween. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, Chelsea, what did you just finish reading? So I just finished reading The Little Book of Luca. Um, it's spelled L-Y-K-K-E. -K -E. It's a Danish word. It's by Meek Viking, or maybe Viking. Uh, he's a Danish researcher. And um, Luca is the Danish word for happiness. And he had a book before that, A Little Book of Huga. Probably everybody's heard of Huga. It became a big thing. It's the comfort and coziness. So Luca's looking at basically happiness and well-being. And I really enjoy nonfiction, um, but I like it to have a little bit of story with it. So this is kind of a perfect combination of the two. Um, he sort of tells his story of uh, 
basically giving up a pretty well-suited career to start a happiness research institute and um, done that and he's currently working on it and getting some very good information about what makes people individually happy and then collectively as both um, small like cities and communities but then larger um, as far as whole countries and I think that that's what I found most interesting was looking at how there are a lot of countries around the world who are looking to implement practices that um, create social collective well-being and I think um, one of the a lot of them should come very second nature the idea of build a community where you are and um, share and you know things like that but I I appreciated um, seeing how well it can be done. And um, I think in a time when we're experiencing this current pandemic and just seeing inequalities uh, laid bare that we saw before, but now they're just more obvious, um, it really was both comforting and also kind of sad because I think there are ways that we can improve, um, but yeah, overall, and it was a very beautiful book. He has like beautiful drawings throughout, very folksy. Um, so it's a beautiful book to look through. I read it on Libby. Um, and yeah, I would recommend it because it's it's not a dense and really hard nonfiction read. It's kind of a good intro if you're new to nonfiction, um, but if you like it, then you'll like it anyway. So um, yeah, I think something that really stuck out to me was the concept of wealth should not equal well-being. And um, he was referring to the channels in Copenhagen when they basically cleaned them up and people would go swimming in them regularly. And now it's just everybody can go swimming for like getting their morning exercise and enjoy the water. Um, and I thought that was really just a cool way that the city had decided to do that so everybody mm -hmm. can enjoy this common good so I thought it was a great book there's a series of three the next one is making memories um and the person's huga so if you're interested it's on Libby yeah. it's very pretty that's book. cool it's fun when you read books that are like stuff that you know intrinsically when you're like oh yeah obviously build a community like that's how you mm -hmm. create happiness but then you see examples of it and just even the reminders are nice and yeah. like seeing it in positive ways are nice and very specific tips. He had like literally like step one, step two, step three, <laughs> like go next door and talk to your neighbor. And I was like, wow, this is really holding me accountable. <laughs> it was good for that. I want to read it again because I did not go and implement a lot of those things, but I was like, wow, this is great. So it also was very self-reflective of, mm -hmm. wow, I want these things, but am I going to do this awkward thing and start yeah. it? Um, yeah. Too, but it was non-judgmental, so I didn't feel like I was a bad person because I didn't feel quite ready to do all of the things he was suggesting. But um, yeah. But next time you read it, next you can time. do some of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the book I'm reading right now, um, just jumping straight into what I'm reading right now, is I have to look at the title. Sorry, I didn't write it down. It's I Hold the, roof by, the Wolf by the Ears, and it's by Laura Van Denberg. Um, sorry, I went to a different screen, so I don't know what my face looked like when I did that. Um, but it's a book of short stories. You guys know that I like short stories. I think that um, in general, I like short stories because you can go in and you get really deep dive and then out really quick. So it's like a little snippets of like huge worlds. Um, and I'm listening to these. They are really weird. Um, so I guess now I have to go back to my other screen again. Uh, have the wolf by the ear is a saying that um, means that you can't hold something safely or let it go. So it's uh, the mm -hmm. idea of justice on one end and self-preservation on another. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of the stories are kind of, well, they're like super hyper realistic too. So like I was listening to it and I, I get book recommendations and put them on hold and I forget about them. And then they show up in my Libby, like this book is available. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't have any idea what it's about. It's going to be a surprise. And I was like, this is nonfiction. Like it was so like hyper realistic mm -hmm. where I thought it was going to be somebody's story. And then it just takes like a turn. So the like, um, I guess when you're talking about Gothic, Monica, like, there's ghosts, there's just like things that don't make sense, but in such like a real world um, and in every story, it's like that where it's like 
this is reality. And it's really similar to like, it's not necessarily talking about the pandemic, but just like the reality that we live in right now or in general right now, not in 2020. Um, and then how, I don't know. She has a story about um, a wedding photographer whose son dies. I'm gonna ruin this story for you guys. Um, whose son dies and what she does now like as a way of coping is uh takes pictures at night like she's not a wedding photographer anymore she goes around and takes pictures at night and she talks about all the like weird things that she sees at night and um and then she meets her neighbor who is a like uh, a phone operator <laughs> but like <laughs> like an erotic phone op operator who um t cries to people and so then she starts I don't know, it's very strange and it goes like takes these weird turns and there's ghosts in that story and I recommend it as like a just a way to like that might be why I'm so frazzled today <laughs> because like reality just isn't you're on shaky ground like she puts you on really firm ground and then takes the ground away from you and it's shocking but also like a nice um, thing I don't know I do recommend it because it is very much like the world isn't real <laughs> in her books I don't know you guys know that I like weird stories too so I it's, love the title yeah the title again you want me to say it again There's the author's name uh sorry I have to get over there oh. Laura Van Denberg she wrote the third hotel she writes novels but I haven't read any of the novels but now I want to I know I know the third hotel I've heard really good things about that but it's kind of the same it's like kind of strange kind of out mm -hmm. there but um the writing's really good and it's just kind yeah of something different to read. yeah yeah it's and it's like the writing is really good that's what it's like hyper realistic like I feel like it's like staring at like a hyper realistic painting and then like something jumps out of the painting at you and you're like oh that <laughs> 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 who recommended it to you I don't remember I do uh, I listen to the book riot podcast mm -hmm. and so they do a lot of book recommendations probably that um yeah I don't remember I have like a really long hold list and it is like always a surprise I'm like ah oh. <laughs> and I'm always like shocked <laughs> <laughs> um Hillary what book are you reading right now um well the next book I'm planning to read is <laughs> called Leave the World Behind. Um, it's by Dan Alam. Um, it just came out this week, so um, I haven't gotten it yet, but I'm hoping my hold gets called soon. Um, it's been getting a lot of buzz, like a, a lot of reviews are coming in and they all seem really good. Uh, it's about a white family who leaves New York to go on a vacation and they rent a fancy rental house in this remote part of Long Island. And then in the middle of the night, the owners of the house who are an older black couple come home and they tell the family that they've come back because there's this sudden blackout that has taken over the city, but they don't know what's happening. And um, because the house is in a rural area and the TV and internet are down, presumably because of the blackout, uh, there's no way for anyone to know what's really going on. And the families don't really know if they can trust each other, um, but they all end up stuck in this house together during this mysterious crisis. And um, yeah, I some of the reviews I read said that the story is suspenseful and a page turner, but that it's also kind of a satire and it's a little bit darkly funny. And, um, and that it explores like a lot of preconceived notions about race and class and parenthood. Um, and I think there's going to be a good plot twist. I just have a feeling. So um, I love that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. I think it's going to be good. It's on the long list for National Book Award, I think, right? Oh, I, I didn't I hear that. So. You might be right, though. Yeah. I so, think it is. Okay. That makes me want to read it more. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, that's my favorite book award, I think. Anything on that list, I'm always like, I love all of these books. <laughs> um, what about you, Monica? What are you reading or planning to read next? I'm reading Southern Book Club's Guide to Slain Vampires <laughs> in honor of Halloween and being in October, I guess. Um, and that's when my hold came up. So <laughs> I'm reading that now. It's I'm about 100 pages into it. And it starts off um, light enough where um, there's the, there are, it's, it takes place in the 90s and there are these Southern women. Um, housewives that um, have a book club 
and are just dying for some excitement and things to go a little differently. And um, a stranger moves into um, town and he has very curious habits of, of not being able to go out in the sunlight. And <laughs> so um, I think I'm at the part where you're going to be discovering whether or not he's a vampire and we'll see how that goes. It was, like I said, it started kind of light and then it kind of took a little bit of a dark turn. And I heard um, I, from what I read about in reviews that that um, that happens in this novel, that it gets a little dark. And um, one person or one reviewer called it blood soaked. Um, <laughs> that sounds a lot dark. <laughs> um, I'm a little worried. I'm a little because no. you were a big fan of Sticky Stackhouse, and that would be... That's what I was just going to say. I, yeah, that's pretty blood soap, too. Yeah, <laughs> Sticky Stackhouse was a lot lighter, I think. Oh, uh, really? I, I think so. I don't know. I'll <laughs> tell you next month, but um, that's the book I'm reading. And, um, that's by Grady Hendrix. So, cool. Yeah. And Chelsea, what are you reading or reading next? So I'm currently reading the third of my Angelou's biography, Singing and Swinging and Getting Married Like Christmas. Uh, and I love it so much. I have not read anything. I had not previously read anything other than um, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. And I randomly selected Gathered Together in My Name on Libby, not knowing that it was her, like the next installment of her biography. And I was completely enamored with it. So this is my next series is I'm going to read all of her um, autobiographies. She, I don't know if you've all read her probably because, okay, yeah, she's oh, been around obviously for a long time and writing for a long time or had been prior to her passing. And she's just an incredible writer. I feel like she is so vulnerable and honest with her own feelings that I feel so seen by her, even though obviously she's writing about herself. Um, and this installment is in her, I think, early 20s. Um, and so she's having all of the normal thoughts that we all have when we're in our early 20s of, you know, sometimes weird reasons we make decisions to do things or ways that we feel embarrassed or trying to be seen as better than we are. Like all of those thoughts that we try to kind of like keep at bay, she just so bold them. And um, I think that that really is inspiring to me because it shows her growth as an individual. And she's just such an incredibly strong woman. I was floored by the things that she's experienced. I had only read the Who Was My Angelou biography meant for kids. I read that <laughs> of one of my classes earlier in the summer and now reading her actual life I'm just like oh my goodness this was so like sanitized but um yeah I, I would recommend it to anybody who enjoys biographies or if you just like beautiful writing because she's such a talented writer <laughs> um and I think also I read it right before I I'd read um, The Vanishing Half, which I know is mentioned, Hillary, you guys are going to be reading that, which talks a lot about race and identity, especially in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And so I felt there was, she had some firsthand knowledge that she was expressing in her story or in her life story. Um, and it was very educational for me. And I felt very privileged to hear her perspective. So I love it. I'm a total evangelist now for her, her books. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been reading. That's cool. I need to reread Where the Caged Bird Sings because I think I read it in high school and I didn't know that there was a trilogy of her autobiographies. Seven. <laughs> seven autobiographies. Oh, wow. She was writing them up until the 2000s. Um, so I think that this one, number three, was written about her 20s while she was in her 40s, if I'm remembering that correctly. So yeah. Um, yeah, she kind of just wrote about her life as her life unfolded. And that's cool. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's awesome. I guess I have to start. What is the second one? Gathering? Gather Together in Gather My Name. Together. A lot of the reviews that I've read is that that is one of the kind of boldest and hardest to understand. Or like, just she has, she's done so many things. They're just like, how on earth did you do that? And like, um, and she was only 18 with some of the things that she was I don't want to spoil it for you. I think it is kind of good to have her unfold it. Um, 
but yeah, she lived quite a life. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, I know you mentioned other, sorry, I just want to like promote some of the library stuff before we say goodbye. Um, you mentioned that you read something in one of your classes. I know you do a lot with reads. Do you want to like plug some of your upcoming sure. reads programs? Yeah, so um, thank you for that plug. Oceanside Reads, we work with adults who are learning to read and write, um, as well as work on job skills and uh, transition into other education if they're interested. So we currently have online classes. We have a biography reading club, and then we have a history reading club as well as a chapter or next chapter book club for adults with developmental disabilities. So we have a lot of online groups, but we also have some online one-on-one -on -one tutoring and um, I'm happy to help anybody with figuring out uh, what would be the best path for them to get where they want to go in life. Awesome. That's a really good service. And I'm really glad that you are here with us and doing all these reads programs. That's awesome. Um, I know that we have a couple book clubs coming up. Um, Hillary, your book club's coming up. Also, Vanishing Half is also on that long list. <laughs> it's my favorite list. Um, and you, when, what day is your book club? We're last Tuesday of the month. It'll be November 27th, oh, October 27th. <laughs> um, and yeah, we'll be reading Vanishing Half um, for that session. It'll be 6 p.m. on Zoom. And if you sign up online, we'll send you the link beforehand so that you can join in. Awesome. And then uh, CJ does a book club that's called the Tuesday Morning Page Turners. It's on the first Tuesday of every month. Um, I'm not sure what they're reading for November. And um, then the LGBTQ book club is on the second Thursday of every month. I'm also not sure what we're reading for November, but keep an eye out for that. And then we have the Graphic Novel Book Club, uh, which is on the second Thursday in November. Um, so keep an eye out on those book clubs. Do we have any other upcoming programs, Monica, that we want to do a little shout out for? You know, just uh, our prescription for reading. If you're looking for oh, yeah. reading recommendations, we have a prescription for reading where you tell us some of your reading symptoms and we will um, recommend five titles to you that are available at Oceanside Public Library. It's a great service. I hear people, uh, people come, somebody came in actually to the library the other day to Mission Branch and they were like, uh, somebody that I'd recognize their name and they loved that they had recommendations just for them. So yeah. it is something that people like and do. And I think the people who do them, uh, do the recommendations really like recommending too. So do it. <laughs> all right. I think that's all. Does anybody have anything else to add? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.